Right. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, so this talk is on multi-geography pulp architectures, and um, it's going to be kind of co-presented by myself, Brian Bathurst, I'm the pulp product owner for services, and Ina. Ina, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes, I'm Ina, and I work on pulp as a principal software engineer. Perfect. So um, feel free to jump in with any questions that you have, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can put them into the chat uh, into the comment section below. Um, so what do users want in terms of deploying into multiple geographies? Um, this is based on observation from questions that I've seen and gotten kind of over the years about deploying pulp. Um, so what they what oftentimes people want not ever, not everybody certainly but what a lot of folks want like if you have a business that runs in multiple geographies you tend to want your content in multiple geographies so content here are RPMs or OS tree Maven gems ISOs etc um, containers I probably should have put that on here that's one of our most popular content types um, and you want that content available everywhere your business is and so folks want uh, the pulp to bring and have that content available in geography. So think geographies like AWS regions, like US East or Europe East or Asia. Um, basically, you want your content all around the globe. Um, and also, it could be in a cloud, like maybe you want it across two different clouds, or it could be like a hybrid cloud model where uh, you know, maybe you want you want it in your data center, which is in, say, Virginia, and you also want it hosted on Amazon in Europe or something like that. So it's not only kind of its location, but maybe also to some extent the the provider that's hosting it, whether it's specific clouds or your own um, infrastructure like data centers. Uh, why do they want it? Well, they want it because they want the content close to where it's needed. Uh, why do they want that? Well, they want it because they want it faster. They want lower latency access to data. Um, they also want it cheaper. So um, particularly in the case where a lot of your clients are running off of a cloud, like they're in a data center that you run, um, if all your content lives in the cloud, then uh, all that content you know, to your hundreds or thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands in some cases that we've talked to, a number of clients, um, you have to deliver that content across the egress for the cloud, which has a cost um, and a pretty significant one at that. So basically, if you can just move your content efficiently to um, to like your own data center, for example, then you move it there once, you pay that egress network cost once, and then you can deliver it tens, hundreds of thousands of times over and over again at you know no meter to cost inside your own data center. So cheaper, basically it's all about cost. Um, and also high availability. So maybe you want to um, have some of your content in US East or, and maybe you want other content in US West and say your business is primarily based in the US in this example, um, you wanna you want to be able to say like some major outage happens and your US East location content is no longer available, you wanna be able to roll all of your business over to US West. So sometimes multiple geographies is also about availability. So there are some architectures that don't work well and we're gonna go through these first. Um, one is having pulp core dash content span over WAN connections. So the pulp, Pulp dash content um, is the service that serves content like RPMs and Maven, et cetera, um, containers. Uh, and so people tend to maybe just want to put that um, in different uh, geographies and have them connect back to like a database that runs somewhere. That that doesn't work well. Um, we're going to see a diagram of this here in a second. It will be simpler to see. Um, another way, another option that people try to do is have like n different pulp installations and just manage them all totally separately. And that also doesn't work that well. We're going to look at that here more in a minute. Um, uh, so good thanks to ChatGPT for helping make these diagrams. Uh, pulp core content spanning multiple WAN connections looks like this. So 
here you have network one, network two, network three. Imagine these networks are in different geographies, like ones in Europe, ones in Asia, ones in, um, in the US, for example. And outside of there, you have a database and you have a file system and you're having your single pulp core dash content processes. You're just kind of like propping one up in each or even a couple of them in each of these availability zones. This does not work well. Don't do this. It doesn't work well because the database connections can't span these WAN connections well. Like connections from applications to databases need like millisecond latency and you know low, very low millisecond latency. And so, you know, if you've ever tried to connect to a Postgres database from across the world with a SQL cursor, you'll quickly find out that that won't work. Um, applications are just not built for that kind of latency, not pulp or, or really other applications. Um, it pulp probably won't even boot if you try to deploy this. Any questions or comments on this? The other option that, that won't work well is having, I mean, this is kind of workable, but it's not great, is having n different pulps. Uh, in this case, you have you know, the same like three geographies section. Um, here, let me stop here for a question. Cheetah. If, if, sorry, um, hi, Brian. Good morning. Um, if this um, uh, database is being taken care of replication across the uh, multi-region, then is that something we can run pulp content or something like that uh, simultaneously across the web? Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'm not a super database expert, but I'm pretty sure that um, you're going to end up with read and write consistency problems. Like um, pulp core dash content does uh, cause some writes to occur against your database. And so like if a write occurred here in network three, um, Yes, your replicated okay. database is going to be replicating that right across to the other WANs, but how does it prevent race conditions? Like, say that Asia wrote that same a conflicting record, and um, US wrote a conflicting record, and I'm just I just don't know enough about how it resolves right right race conditions to know if that will work or not. Maybe it'll work awesome. I, I just don't know enough about re replication, so I guess I need to say I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks. Even even if the race conditions will be handled correctly, you will still lose time on keeping in sync all those read write replicas. So they're not out of sync. Yeah, well, I guess they're not. Oh. You could have a situation, I guess, where they could be read replicas um, that you only read from. So the content app, when it does on demand, it also writes to the database. Yeah, exa exactly. If the content app, if all it ever did was read, I think read replicas would be very viable, but it doesn't. And maybe that's a design problem with, you know, with Pulp's design choices. Maybe there should be something that can serve content that only reads. Uh, it has a lot to do, if you're wondering, like what possibly could the Pulp content app be writing? It has to do with caching uh is that right what is it's it? whenever it's um uh, streaming content oh it, yeah it saves an artifact and it saves that a record in the database oh yeah, yeah that's right I, so for on-demand content yeah so we don't use on-demand content i suspect there may be other pulp users out there who don't use on-demand or streaming content so that might uh... yeah yeah um this may you know maybe there's a there there mm -hmm. um let's contrast that idea which is a fine idea against the architecture that i'm going to pitch as the horse to ride um Chia, this all started from your question how do you feel about our answer yeah um we can work to that um it'll be nice uh what you said is like having a read replica of the content uh it'll be a nice idea so there cool. are ways we can offload that da database um, replica outside of it, and uh, and we can do use the pulp content in the front and run simultaneously. 
yeah yeah cool that's a it's it's a it's nice it's interesting for me to learn about that interesting use case so thank thank you very much for that um let's go back to this architecture uh this architecture i think is viable but um you run into a couple of problems with it so the just to review this real fast is do you see these i'm using rpm as an example here so you have some rpms out in the world and you want those rpms to be synced and replicated to different geos um so you, what you do is you put a pulp in each geo pulp one two and three and you just do the syncing in one two and three and you kind of set them all up the same because you probably want homogeneity in terms of like your urls and how they're configured no matter what geo you're in so you end up you're going to end up kind of managing pulp one two and three very similarly and you're probably going to have to do a lot of scripting and automation to try to make it the same um so you end up, end up with a couple of problems they're not super blockers though um but one of them is that content can be different so like they're not all syncing at the exact same moment and so you know you, you really have no guarantees that the content available on pulp one and pulp two are the same um because the syncs just don't occur at that same moment and upstream repos are changing and you don't know when so your content can be different um, maybe that's okay maybe it's not also you have egress costs from the original cdn because you're kind of triple syncing it um and there might also be rate limiting. That's probably not as big of an issue, but um, I think one of the bigger issues is just the time effort of managing all of these different pulp ins installations. Like they are separate, but you have to kind of figure out how to treat them as one thing. And that's gonna take human time and tools. Um, so there, we try to make that easy to manage pulp. So like maybe that's not a huge deal, but that's the downside of this architecture. But I would say this is viable, and it's not that really that different than what I'm going to recommend. Um, uh, so what to do instead? So the idea here is you organize your content into one pulp, and you test it there, and you arrange it there, and you do everything that you want to do. And then what you do is you sync to a pulp that's running in each geo. And that architecture looks like this. So this is the one that um, I recommend to most folks to do. Um, and you end up with... Uh, a single pulp that performs syncing and arrangement that's kind of up here in the top. Um, you can, if you're ha taking an uploaded content, you probably want all of your uploaded content to go there. The idea is that, you know, the the pulp in the top center here is the real the real one, um, and these other ones in each of the geos are just servers to basically sync out your content and bring it close to your clients in the different geos. Um, and you're probably thinking to yourself, um, that's that solves what that does solve is the content can be different problem um, because uh, you have a lot more control about um, when these syncs to the different geos occur, ensuring that they're identical. So this architecture really well solves the problem of your content not being the same. But you're probably looking at this diagram and saying, hey, wait a second, Brian. Uh, I still have to manage all these things. And in fact, you've introduced one more. You've made the problem worse. Um, so Pulp is a specific part of its feature set that's designed to make this easy. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Ina, who's going to tell you um, about that. Ina? Thank you. Uh, Brian, will you keep the slides? For me you bet or should i reshare okay thank you uh so in pulp core 323 we have introduced a feature called uh, replication and that's a feature that uh, allows a pulp instance to discover distributions on an upstream pulp and create necessary repositories remotes and um, distributions and as a result as a result you can serve the same content as the upstream pulp uh, so far, we have added the support for uh, Pulp RPM and Pulp File plugins because in order to create uh, repositories and uh, other entities, it's plugin specific. So every plugin would need to add the support. So far, we have started with just these two. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so let's deep dive a bit on how to use this feature. This feature has a pull model. Uh, in which there is an upstream pulp 
uh, the pulp from which the content will be synced or replicated from. And there is a downstream pulp uh, that will be performing the actual content syncing from the upstream pulp. Uh, the first step to be taken is to configure the downstream pulp to sync the content from the upstream pulp. And we would need to go through a few API calls, which I will show you on the next slide. Uh, as a first thing, you would need to have a post call uh, on the upstream pulp. Uh, and uh, in that call, you will configure uh, the URL uh, to, the, uh, to the upstream pulp as well as the information as uh, basic of inserts. And after that, uh, one would need to trigger, trigger the replication task. And that replication task will, uh, by default, uh, Brian, if you can switch the slide. Um, that replication task will, by default, replicate everything uh, on the upstream pulp. And it will create all the necessary entities uh, it will discover the distribution on the upstream pulp and on the downstream pulp, it will create uh, the remote and the repository and the names will match uh, between upstream and downstream. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so this, there are a few things which this feature doesn't do yet. Uh, whenever the downstream uh, distributions are created, uh, the replicated uh, content is not protected. So as long as you care for the content protection, you would need to manually uh, create the content guard uh, that will be protecting the content on the downstream pulp. And so far, this feature supports just immediate sync. So whenever the replication process occurs, uh, the content is being synced in, in the immediate mode. Uh, but in the future, if there is interest, we can add the on-demand uh, policy as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned that by default, all the distributions are being discovered. And as a result, there will be like exact replica of the upstream pulp in the downstream. But in case you would need some more granularity and more, more control on the upstream pulp, uh, one can define labels and uh, if they're set, only the set of distributions on the upstream uh, will be replicated that have those labels. Uh, and so in this case, uh, uh, you will be enabled to replicate just subset of content if uh, not all of it needs to be replicated. Um, and, and, yeah. and here is the demo. Uh, I'm not going to show the demo. Uh, there is a recording which is being shared on the slides. Um, uh, Dennis Kliben and this demo is, uh, uh, is going to guide us through the steps. I don't think we need to play it right now, right? Agreed. Um, the, these slides will be shared later, so uh, you'll be able to fetch them. Uh, so this is about the feature. Uh, our replication feature and one would be thinking so why do i need to have this complex setup setting up another pulp and doing all this replication thing if i can just uh, use our sync instead and the answer is yes you can use our sync but there are a few coaches um uh, not every it depends on the ecosystem of the content not every content type uh, would be uh, would be enough to just rsync the static files and serve them via web server. Uh, so there are, there are a few tri tricky things. So tricky thing number one, um, for example, whenever rsync uh, syncs the content, um, as a result, there can be non-atomic operation where the clients can end up in the broken state. Uh, for example, thinking of the RPM, uh, repository which is composed out of the metadata files and the RPMs. The rsync would rsync first the metadata and the client will discover through the metadata with con the content and would try to fetch the content and if the content is still not there the client would receive 404 so they will be in the broken state because the packages haven't been rsync just yet. Uh, with pulp we wouldn't get in such situation. Uh, 
Uh, tricky thing number two, um, with rsync, you don't have any opportunity for the on-demand repos. So if you care about saving some storage space, um, that wouldn't be an option. And with replication feature, even though we don't support on-demand sync yet, uh, we can extend it uh, in the future. And tricky thing number three, um, as I have mentioned, not con not every content type is as simple um, as uh, our syncing a static file. Uh, for example, Docker registry or Ansible, they uh, both need queryable APIs. So one would need to invest into this uh, a bit more than just our sync on the web server. Um, I think that's it for the presentation. Brian, if you have anything to add, we can then open up for questions. Um, yeah, one or, one or two quick things, and then we'll go over to Matthias for first question. Uh, a huge thanks to um, Dennis Kleben for uh, basically creating this feature, um, this replication feature. And uh, go check out his demos, the one that we linked to. It more or less shows you the long and short of how it works. Um, I also want to thank the users. Several users are using this um, in upstream, and I want to thank them for their testing and a lot of feedback. We fixed a slew of bugs along the way. Actually, Dennis did. Um, the other thing I want to mention is um, the, the this architecture avoids uh, solves the problem of this man this management problem because basically you just like set these things to replicate, and you can you should be able to just configure like a cron job just to call that replicate and trigger that replicate like every hour or every day or something like that. And you just don't worry about these pulps anymore. The only one you really have to ever think about is this one up here. And, you know, that content just auto replicates, uh, you know, as your trigger syncs occur. And um, the, I have one more point, but I um, don't know what it is right now. So I'm gonna go over to Matthias for your first question, Matthias. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, let's say you have this architecture, but you have a lot of um, downstream replicating pulps. Do you think it would be possible to use the ACS feature to get into some kind of a distributed download um, architecture so that not all the content is pulled from the upstream pulp 20 times? but that the downstream clients can share the data between themselves. Can you talk a little bit about where the sharing is, like in the context of this diagram? Is it within one geography or, or between the geographies? Um, probably it only makes sense in within one geography. And is the, thing, uh, and is yeah, the, idea, the, the idea with that, uh, for example, part two would know about pulp obviously as the upstream and then somehow would have some information about pulp 3 being an alternate content source so that downloading is not putting too much pressure on the upstream pulp yeah so i think what you're saying is hey what if you just configured pulp 1 2 and 3 as using an alternate content source and you hook the big disk up to it that let you already have the content there is that what you're wondering about? Basically, yes. Yeah, I think that, I think that would work fine. Um, these features will work together, um, is what I expect. I don't think anyone's actually formally tested them together, but having been involved in development of both, I believe that they will work just fine together. So if you configured an alternate content source on say pulp one, two, or three, um, when these replication syncs, which are just normal syncs occur, they're gonna work correctly with the alternate content source. So that for those who aren't familiar, what that means is that the sync from, from say this upstream pulp to pulp three will um, fetch the metadata. And then when it goes to fetch a specific binary file, pulp three is like, oh, actually I already have it. And it's over here on this local disk that I had mounted. I That's would like just fun. quickly to add that uh, probably it would work fine, but just worth mentioning that uh, having a single point of failure or single point of truth, it has its own pluses and minuses. And so it really depends how you will configure all things. It would definitely work. Um, probably having one point of failure and one single source of truth. I would think I would fancy more, but 
Yeah, I don't think that the uh, uh, alternate content source is changing the source of truth here because the source of truth for metadata is always the one depicted as pulp here. Mm -hmm. It would just help downloading the, the actual content from somewhere else, which then is protected by uh, cryptographical digests to be correct. Yeah, I mean, in a sense that uh, when, when you replicate from one point of source, you know that uh, all of the replicas will have the same data. Here, you will have pulp to having two ways where to fetch the content from. And if pulp three is not up to date, it really depends how you will uh, organize the workflow. But what I'm trying to say, you will need to really make sure that all of the replicas are having the same content, as long as you care for it, obviously. Um, I wanted to go back to, uh, thank you for the question, Matthias, um, and the discussion. Uh, what I was going to say was, um, a lot of times I, f I feel like people, users feel like deploying a pulp is a hard thing to do. And um, I, there's some truth to that, especially historically. But our goal with switching to container based as the default deployment, and particularly a container that has all of the pulp processes in it, a single container, um, means that uh, we're, we're really trying to make pulp able to scale down very effectively. Um, and I think that works well with what we're pitching here as an architecture, because literally you should just be able to start a single container for pulp one and two and three. And yes, it's not highly available, um, but also do you care? Because the thing is, is that, you know, if, if one of these falls over, you just start another one and tell it to perform syncing from the main one originally again, like they're very disposable. So the idea that um, this should be easy to set up because you're not really setting up a complicated thing. You're literally just starting a container and then pointing some API calls at it and you're done. Um, and I was thinking, David, uh, feel free not to answer this or engage to whatever level you want. Um, th this isn't kind of in a lot of ways like what you're doing um, only it's not really pulp at the edge. It's some other software that you guys have built. Um, yeah, I was thinking we have like a poor man's version of this. We were just using Nginx, which is caching on the packages and doing reverse proxy requests to the pulp up there. Well, that does sound pretty sweet. I mean, I would, I, I, uh, I, I won't say like, Hey, Pulp is more reliable than Nginx. I mean, like it's a single component. It's it's really well tested. So like that probably is a great is a great way to keep going. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we could, it would be worth looking at this. I know that I'm not sure about the performance of like that initial request where a user requests a package and then Nginx has to go and fetch it from Pulp. Yeah, but that happens once. It does, but it yeah. might be slow. Like if it takes like half an hour, that's not good. Yeah, I think one of the other things uh, has to do with um, metadata invalidation at the edge nodes, um, which is, um, I'm sorry, I keep bringing it back to your talk because I just find it, I just found it so interesting, um, is, uh, you know, like when you sync the metadata, that metadata gets cached. And I guess, I guess it gets invalidated when you sync again, when you run when you run the rsync again, is there R? See, this no, is the so we used to use rsync, but now we don't. But actually, your point stands. So what we have to do is we have the metadata. So like in pulp RPM, where there's hash file names, we can store those forever. But like the actual repo md.xml, we have a very low um, uh, cache time for that. I think like five um, minutes or something. So um, those requests do get proxy pulp. That's cool. Very that's cool area we could optimize by using pulp instead. Yeah, it's just a contrasting thing. I think what you're doing is great. I don't mean to to draw an, any other distinction than that. Um, it just, uh, it, it was yeah. seeming similar and I thought that was cool. So that is our time. Just, um, just let me add this, this uh, um, reverse proxying works for the simple content type as Ina pointed out for container just wouldn't work because that needs more interactivity. 
from the registry. Yep. Yep. Um, I see, I thought I saw Grant's hand up, but I also see that we're out of time. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take yeah. it offline. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Hey, uh, thanks a bunch. Um, that's our pitch. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you very much, Brian and Ina. And uh, thank you very much.